So Sarah, as a certified resume strategist yourself, what are the top three or five tips or strategies you want to give to job seekers? We know that we tell people, customize your resume, put accomplishment statement. But with this DNA age, is it two, two pages? Is it one page? And then let's not forget the use of chat GDP these days, or how they are integrated. Yeah. Yeah, no. Um, so quite an important question. Uh, I get a lot of questions similar to uh, to the ones that you mentioned. So basically, the first thing is, especially as we're talking about now the immigrants context, yes. to keep away any personal information. Sure. I do receive a lot of resumes, like for people coming from outside, let's say the Canadian market, that they have their personal it's photo, their their age, their their gender, yes. you know, Marital religion. Status, yes. Yes. ethnicity all of that is a no 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 yes. so just put your first and last name so even the name of two sections out of two sections your email which is the active one and it has to be professional email yes. and linked in url and your active phone number that's mm -hmm. all what you have or need to add in terms of personal information the other tip i will add is as well, a lot of different, uh, I would say, professionals put a statement, references are provided upon request. Yeah. This is never to be mentioned in the resume. And others, in reference to the, to the, to the references, they actually put a list of their references with their yeah, emails and phone numbers. Yeah. This is as well a no, huge no-go. No exactly. No, no. Because... In the process, uh, when you get into the recruitment process, mm -hmm. you will definitely be asked for references because yeah. that is part of the process. So yes. you can always have them ready in another document, but mm -hmm. do not put them in the resume because also just in case you never know who can pick up the phone and ask about you before you, you even know. Yeah. yeah. So you're giving them that extra information ahead of time, which is not the right time and place. Yes. Another tip I would give is to make sure that uh, your resume is um, uh, eye friendly uh, reader friendly and what do that what do I mean by that like you don't need to add photos or graphics mm -hmm. and a lot of colors yeah. no it has to be quite uh, uh, simple yeah simple I mean if you want to add col colors put these dark colors which mm -hmm. is like dark blue or dark green uh, because also you want the system to be able to scan it yes. and read through it uh, when it comes to the font size, you also need to make sure the font is uh, uh, friendly to the eye and readable and sorry, and easily readable. So I would say font uh, size 11 mm. or 12, 12 yes. but not 10 yeah. and 14 would be uh, a lot. Um, so that is about the font size. Um, the labeling of the resume sections have to be the standard one, which is you either uh, uh, name the first section as summary of highlights or executive summary, or um, let's say summary highlights. Qualification. Yes, yes, which is that summary, right? And then the second uh, section has to be either history or work, sorry, work experience or work history. And then the third one is education. Right. The reason why I'm saying that is that this way the resume will be easily parsable. Mm -hmm. So when you upload your resume into an applicant tracking system or a system, the system as well will extract information from it and put it into the online uh, job yeah. application. So you want to make sure the parsability is at the 90s percentage. Yes. Uh, so your information are, are are well extracted. And the system would be uh, would be actually well um, uh, uh, like defined in a way that they can know when you say qualification section, they can understand what is this and then education yeah. or work experience and then education. Mm -hmm. So that is another tip. Uh, and uh, lastly, uh, not to put a huge content mm -hmm. of bullets under each role. Make it up to five bullets for every role. Yes. And yes, to your point, it has to be achievements focused, yes. not what I did in terms of responsibilities. No, yes. what I have achieved. achieved. So that's what I can share as key points for writing a resume mm -hmm. and use the active uh, voice for sure. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, uh, I uh, I know that there's a lot of software these days that you can upload your resume, upload the job description. If there's 19 above or it's lower, you can make the changes. 
And also in terms of those keywords, because applicant tracking system can track it. I tell my clients or people I'm having read line by line and see if you have those keywords or change it, those keywords, because sometimes because we are customizing, even if you're applying for the same customer representative role, maybe the keywords in this role might be different than other roles. Do you agree to that? Yeah. So there is definitely these, we call them keywords or buzzwords that you can uh, check which are these in every job descriptions and use them in your resume. What I wanted to, what I want to mention here is that it is not that, um, you will be disqualified if you mm -hmm. don't add the keywords. No, but there will be a higher relevancy to the yes. role. You They will see that you have more what they need in the role. So using these keywords in the job descriptions, uh, and every job description could have a different keywords depending on the company we're dealing with, even if they are similar job titles. So to your point, yes, always refer to the specific job description to conclude what keywords to include to just increase your possibility of being shortlisted. But definitely... Just to make it clear, the the ATS will not disqualify you if the keywords are present or not. Mm -hmm. uh, the knockout questions or the screening questions uh, are the ones that will disqualify someone from the system or not. Yeah. But the keywords will increase your possibility of uh, you know uh, of being shortlisted and seeing you and the employer to mm. see you as a relevant candidate mm. and you have what they need yeah. one last thing sarah in terms of um we know that everyone after checking your resume they will go on linkedin uh, and then they will yeah. check you mentioned that put on your resume five bulletin points, but on your LinkedIn, you have more options to put more. But make sure that you have the same thing from resume to LinkedIn and add more on LinkedIn. Is there anything specific just for last one about LinkedIn in that experience part? Do you have anything to add? Yeah. So your LinkedIn is your really your personal brand, your online resume. Yes. It's your public profile to the to the whole world. Yeah. So make sure those bullet points, regardless how much they are, they are your achievements. So highlight what you have achieved in that role. No one cares what your responsibilities were. Yeah, They want to know what you achieved because then they can conclude what potentially the value you will bring to them, right? Yeah. So make sure you, uh, you, you use that achievements uh, uh, let's say language or phrasing to yeah. show your value. Uh, you can use it uh, uh, through showing, or you can show your achievements through numbers or percentages yeah. or figures as much as possible. Yeah. If that is not available as in numbers or figures, you can use strong adjec adjectives to yeah. show your achievement and what was your impact. Yeah. Uh, I would end here with actually as well adding a very important point to boost your LinkedIn profile, which is uh, feeding it with as much as possible recommendations yes. from previous employers or colleagues or mentors or mm -hmm. peers, managers you worked with, that will give stronger even credibility yeah. to your profile and uh, people will be even more comfortable yeah. to you know, get you through as yeah. well the recruiting process and know more about yeah. you. Thank you, Sarah, for that. And with that, my interview comes to an end. I really enjoyed the conversation. Very practical tips for the audience. If you didn't watch previous videos, please check them out. And if you have any questions, you can reach us to our social network. Thank you again, Sarah. Let's keep in touch. Bye, everyone.